Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Big Daddy Top Hat here. The rough and tumble and rather expansive world of Street Fighter has spawned many influential, iconic and progressive female characters over the years. One of the earliest examples of these bottom-kicking ladies is the scarf-clad Italian gypsy known as Rose, who was the third ever playable female character in a Street Fighter game. The first two of course being Kami and old Thunderfies herself, Chun-Li. As for Rose though, it appears the origin and history of this perennial fighter seems to be seldom discussed. So join me today as I put that right and take a deep dive look into the Romany history of the purple haired vixen herself, Rose. Yeah! Rose's original design was not so much influenced by, but directly inspired by the Lisa Lisa character from quirky Japanese manga series JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. They share a look that is almost identical, and both clearly shop at exactly the same stores. Not only that, but they both possess an equal passion for impossibly long scarves that double as offensive weapons. It should be noted that although the JoJo series is famous for its fighting game spin-offs, no such spin-offs existed when Rose was originally created in 1995. The first JoJo's Bizarre Adventure fighting game didn't come out for another three years in 1998, although Lisa Lisa herself didn't actually make an appearance in one until 2013's All-Star Battle, so there you go. But if you want to learn about the original Capcom Arcade Board System 3 game, why not check out my video on it after this one. Deploying many kicking and sweeping techniques as well as air throws, Rose's primary form of offence comes from her aforementioned scarf, which can be used both as a ranged weapon and to launch projectiles. Slightly more balanced than previous female Street Fighter characters, Rose may not be quite as quick as Kami or Chunners, but she brings a lot more power and range to the table. A fortune teller by trade and traveller by heart, our girl was originally born in Italy. Anyway, Rose's first appearance was in the fondly remembered 1995 arcade hit Street Fighter Zero or Street Fighter Alpha Warrior's Dream once it left Japan. Trying to use her unique set of skills and abilities known as Soul Power to rid the world of evil energy, her mystical fortune-telling expertise told her of a powerful man with a powerful hat by the name of M. Bison, whose evil energy was so strong she knew she had to try and eradicate it herself. To do so, she had to seek him and take him down at any cost. Rose's completion screen in the first Alpha game shows us that she was successful in doing so, but used up every last bit of her soul power in the process and collapsed through absolute exhaustion. The very final moments show her hear a faint unidentified heartbeat and question whether perhaps Bison is in fact still alive. And spoiler alert, of course he's still bloody alive. Men with hats like that don't die so easily, I'm afraid. Proving to be a popular addition to the ragtag bunch of zany, violent Street Fighter nutcases, our girl made a swift return to the franchise in the sequel Alpha Slash Zero Two, which came out the following year to a glowing reception. Once again trying to take down Bison and his evil energy, Rose enters herself into the tournament to stop him for good. Along the way she meets friend of the channel and headband aficionado Ryu, whom she senses is struggling with the Satsui no Hado. He has deep within. Offering her help and mentorship, she guides him as much as she can before she eventually runs into that bloody menace to society known as Akuma. Recognising the same dark Hado in him as she saw in Ryu, Rose tells Akuma to make like a tree and get out of here, which he does not take kindly to and instigates in fisticuffs. Although it was no easy feat, Rose survived her encounter with the menace in Akuma and continued back on her quest to take out Bison. In a conclusion eerily similar to Alpha 1, Rose's completion screen shows us that she has eradicated Bison's soul power and finally got rid of the evil git. When she goes to check her tarot cards however, she sees that Bison not only still lives, but is committed to appearing in as many sequels, prequels and side games as possible. Oh dear. Two years would pass until the third and final iteration of the Alpha portion of the Street Fighter franchise would hit arcades, which would also see the return of our girl Rose to the now massively inflated and rather impressive roster of selectable characters. 
1998 Street Fighter Alpha 3 would see us learn a lot more about our mysterious gypsy protagonist, as her continued quest to take down 1992's brimmed hat wearer of the year, M. Bison would lead her to discover some unexpected revelations. Rose made it to Bison for a third time and punched her hand right through his heart, after turning her fist into a ball of false energy. Although this was supposed to ensure she was vanquishing Bison once and for all, it caused an unexpected and somewhat confusing bit of dialogue between them that revealed that they are two bodies sharing one soul, which explains why they have such similar powers. My soul will not be extinguished just yet, proclaimed Bison, as he let forth a torrent of exposition before evaporating into thin air. All of this was all a bit much for Rose, who was also badly injured from a battle with a Shadaloo leader, so she passed out. Thankfully, Guy from Final Fight happened to be walking past as he just brazenly hopped from one video game to the next, like the cheeky little crossover franchise scamp that he is, and took her to safety. Although it appeared for all intents and purposes that Bison had finally left this mortal coil, the sneaky bugger had actually transferred his soul and consciousness into Rose. Now being controlled by Bison from within, the implausible plot continued with our poor protagonist carrying out the dastardly dictator's commands without any knowledge of what was happening. Through no will of her own, Rose managed to reform Shadaloo and was instrumental in a new body being made for Bison, so he could go on to resume his position as Shadaloo leader, be the final boss in the moderately successful Street Fighter 2, and most importantly get his favourite red hat back on. When Bison relieved control of Rose's body and returned her consciousness back to its previous state, she had no recollection of the events that had transpired. A few years would pass before we got to see our gypsy charm in a new Street Fighter game, but she did make a couple of low-key appearances in crossover games in the interim period. Although not an official title by any means, it would be remiss of me not to mention 2003's impressive Mugen engine ROM, Marvel vs Capcom 3 Last Rise of Heroes, which has absolutely no connection to 2011's Marvel vs Capcom 3. Rose appears alongside a massive roster of characters in a game that was notorious in the fighting game community throughout the early 2000s and is one of the finest examples of what can be done with the robust DIY engine. Rose would also pop up in the critically panned Capcom Fighting Evolution from 2004, which saw her and three of her fellow Street Fighter Alpha alumni go up against characters from Street Fighter 2, Street Fighter 3, Darkstalkers and Red Earth, as well as a new character in poorly balanced 2 on 2 survival matches. The game was heavily criticised on release, partly due to the lazily copy and pasted sprites from other games, which appeared ill-matched and often outdated, but also due to the rather humbling comparison with other crossover fighting games, such as Capcom vs SNK2 and Marvel vs Capcom 2, which were light years ahead in terms of both presentation and gameplay, despite being earlier efforts. Rose's next appearance would be as one of the solo units in 2005's tactical RPG crossover Namco Cross Capcom, which was a Japanese PS2 exclusive for Monolith Soft. I won't spend too much time talking about this game here, as there is an entire video devoted to this obscure and rather curious little title elsewhere on this very channel. Although Capcom Fighting Evolution was a bit of a dud and Namco Cross Capcom pretty much flew under the radar, Rose's next appearance would be a doozy as she graced us with her presence once more in 2008's wonderful Street Fighter 4, although she wouldn't actually show up until the console version which was released the following year. Her appearance and moveset largely unchanged, save for a few welcome additions and tweaks here and there, Rose's first polygonal appearance is voiced by Gina Grad as she tries to track down Bison after learning that he survived Akuma's attack at the end of a Street Fighter 2 tournament. After four games, is anyone else starting to get the impression that Rose is possibly more than a little bit obsessed with M. Bison and his magnificent hat? Ooh. En route to yet another encounter with the psychopower wielding maniac, our girl Rose was forced to come face to face with her old chum Ryu in what was essentially the semi-final of the tournament. She felt she had to take Ryu out not only to ensure her own progression, but also because she was worried about the Dark Hado consuming him, or potentially being exploited by some nefarious elements if he were to continue on his current path. 
The pair finally, reluctantly came to blows after Rose tells Ryu that he is the last hope, knowing that ultimately he is the only one that can truly take Bison down. Given that Bison is one of the most evil and reprehensible scallywags to ever disgrace the Street Fighter universe, it should come as no surprise that he Pearl Harbored our girl and took what little power she had left during an ambush, leaving her unconscious and helpless in a limbo state. As luck would have it, our old game hopping mate Guy managed to save her from Bison's clutches with a cunning plan that even Baldrick from Black Adder would have been proud of. Threatening to destroy Bison's only means of escape, unless he released Rose from his clutches, the Shadow boss begrudgingly agreed and handed over Rose into Guy's care. The only issue with this rather ill-conceived plan was that the world's most evil man was back on the loose, ready for yet more sequels. Those sequels would have to wait a little while, however, as Rose's next appearance would be in another quirky and little-known crossover title by the name of Street Fighter Cross Mega Man, released to Windows in 2012, initially as a fan-made independent project, but later with the acknowledgement and support of Capcom, who actually ended up assisting in production. Rose serves as one of the bosses in the game, which is an 8-bit style platformer made very much in the vein of the Blue Bombers NES classics, but with Street Fighter characters replacing several of the key enemies. Our girl's pixelated D-Mate form retains many of her key arsenal of moves from the Street Fighter series, with the stiletto-clad fashionista also busting out a teleporting skill to keep Mega Man on his toes. Next up for Rose would be 2016 Street Fighter V, although fans of the scarf-loving Vixen would have to wait several years until the Season 5 pack of characters would be released to see her actually finally turn up as a playable character. Better late than never, I suppose, but she did make brief cameo turns in Nash's and Manat's stories prior to this. Rose's involvement this time is heavily linked to her new protégé, the previously mentioned Manat, who was a fellow fortune teller from Egypt. Rose ends up sparring with Manat and defeating her, leaving Manat to stay behind and continue her training while Rose goes off gallivanting around the world searching for answers to what lies within the cards. Her Season 5 story mode sees her have a rendezvous with the 140-year-old Hermit Oro and battle perennial presidential candidate and jacked-up Abe Lincoln look-alike, G, before returning home after a worrying premonition about a potentially world-altering event. Rose's story concludes with her relaxing in the bath, contemplating potentially travelling back in time to put a stop to whatever this mystery menace is before it has a chance to manifest. Back to the future style. Who knows, maybe she's coming to stop Covid. This has made many people speculate that she will play an important role within Street Fighter 6, but only time will tell. In addition to her main roles, our plucky protagonist has a couple of background cameos in both the park stage of Marvel Super Heroes vs Street Fighter as well as the London stage of Capcom vs SNK2 Mark of the Millennium 2001. She also has welcome appearances in several of the comic book and animated iterations of the many and varied Street Fighter stories as well as a fairly prominent role in the live-action Street Fighter movie, The Legend of Chun-Li. Although she is sometimes criticised for not utilising her abilities to the fullest, taking into account the fact her powers basically mirror Bison's, it's probably reasonable to think she could have been a bit more of a prominent player. Rose's story has been a fascinating one, and I certainly look forward to seeing what the next chapter in Rose's Street Fighter story looks like. Her existence is certainly an interesting one. So, ladies and gentlemen, that was the story of Rose. If you enjoyed this video and you are new here, why not check out my recent hour-long omnibus episode covering the history of all four of Street Fighter 2's Grand Masters. And make sure you hit that subscriber button and notification bell to ensure you see more of my Street Fighter content going forward. Videos like this are in part possible due to the generous people who back what I do on Patreon, allowing me to work on this channel on a full-time basis. Speaking of these wonderful folks, special shout-outs go out to... 
A Murder of Crows, Carl Johnson, Heo Paula Lopez, Nostalgia Collector, Ben Haradine, Corey I. Marsh Sr., Ryan Dinched, Evan Border, Philip Nanth, Azarakai, Jopkin Varela, Michael Cullix, Ego, Jordan Durant, Ian Boyle, Nick Daniels, Princess Zana, Daniel Daly, Computer Man, House of a Ted, Gary Pinkett, ECU Professor, Johnny Holly, August Piazza, Justin Wang, Capcom vs. SNK, Homies Gonzalez, Man Shovel, Michael Hall, Sang he, Norma Stitz, Langston Miller, Noob, Sarah Powell, Vlamink Renee, Marvin Ariliga, TOG Driver, Louis Viant, John Bates, David Bow, Chris Fisk, Rick67, Antonio Rodriguez, Craig Jenkins, Synth Spaces, Punk Toast, and everybody else who backs what I do on Patreon. Thank you very much. Indeed. Cheers. Cheerio.